I'll call this meeting to order 702. This is the organizational meeting. Adoption of agenda. Can I have a motion, please? Mr. Cutler. Proposed committee or vote. All in favor? Proposed committee organization and structure. It's all there. Questions, concerns? So we need a motion on each one of these. Motion to accept the committee organization. I'll make the motion that we accept the committee organization. All in favor? Passed. Meeting dates for next year. Council meeting dates. They look good to me. I'll make a motion. Are, you, are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> Went through my calendar and made sure they all fit in. <laughs> Can I have a motion to accept the meeting, minute, meeting dates? Mr. Cutler. Councillor Cutler. All in favor? Pass. Uh, deputy Mayor schedule? I'll move the Deputy Mayor schedule. No questions? Is it longer than before? I, no, I thought we had two months before. Now we have three? Something's changing. No. That's all the same. Okay. Can I have a motion to accept that schedule? I'll make a motion that we accept the schedule. Councilor Moore, all in favor? <laughs> Designation of municipal office. The address that we have to place, right? right? Well, we have to have another one of these next year if we move into the. Yeah. Yeah, yeah as part of the map review, um, because you have to be able to produce that resolution. So we've just put it as part of the organizational meeting annually so that it's always. Uh, up to date on record. So. I'll move that we designate 221 45th Avenue West Clarison, Alberta as a town's municipal office location and address. Thank you, Councillor Cutler. <laughs> All those in favor? Designation of financial institution. Marion? Uh, the same, just under the Municipal Government Act, it requires that we designate our financial institution, um, and currently we are banking with uh, BMO, and so we're just asking again for that to be done on an annual basis as part of the organizational meeting. Okay. I'll move to designate BMO as the town's banking institution. Thank you, Councillor Carlson. All in favor? Passed. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Councilor Carlson. Just <laughs> you have a couple things to go through anyways. Call a regular council meeting to order at 706. We have a change in the agenda. Marion? Um, yes, yeah, so the Clarisome Animal Rescue Society has asked to be for their delegation to be postponed to a future date. Um, they had some difficulty connecting with us tonight, so. Um, we need to remove that from the agenda. Can I have a motion to adopt the 
Oh, I, we'll oh. need a motion to remove and then oh. a motion to adopt. Okay. I'll make the motion to remove that. Thank you. All in favor? Motion to adopt the amended agenda. Agenda. All in favor? Okay. Clearsum District Museum Board. Bill? Hi. How's everyone tonight? Good. Good. Barry? Barry Gibbs, the uh, chair of the museum board. So Bill and I are going to tag team on this. Uh, uh, presentation that's okay yep okay um, thank you for the opportunity to to talk about um, a museum uh, multi-purpose storage building um, we've had a, a need for for this building for some time um, storage at the museum is um, very limited and the storage that we have is not very good the storage in the basement of the of the station and in the attic of the station is really the only storage we have right now. Um, as well, we have three storage units and we have st some larger piece of equipment at the at the uh, town yards, the town shop yards. So we uh, don't have much museum storage. Our, the collection is core to a museum. Um, the archives and the artifacts that's the core of the museum's responsibility is to preserve those uh, items of his historical significance for the, the future generations, current and future generations. And so we have a responsibility to maintain those items in, uh, in perpetuity. So storage is a big thing. And it may not, you may not be aware that um, most uh, museums only exhibit a portion of their um, their archives and their artifacts, and uh, usually less than 50% of uh, their collection is on display. In our case, uh, we have a large uh, amount of stuff on, on display, but we have no storage and we have a, this issue is becoming uh, worse and worse. We, we're a victim of our own success. The better we do and promote the museum, it seems like we get more and more artifacts and we got no place to put them. So that's the reason why this has been uh, an issue, and it's not a new issue. It's been around uh, since 2012. It's been discussed um, at the museum board level, and we uh, sure appreciate the fact that it was that 200,000 has been put into the capital budget for the future. I think 2025 was where it's in, where it is right now. Um, originally, we've been hoping to suggest switching that with the repair of the sandstone on the uh, station, but we understand that that's going to go ahead and we don't have any issue with that. Um, but we do have this uh, problem that we um, need to address. And so we've been doing some work on that and uh, Bill's been doing a lot of research. And so I'm going to turn it over to him to let to, for him to, to uh, describe what we are proposing. Okay. Thank you very much, Barry. Um, and I just uh, wanted to mention that uh, what we've put together is in no way any finalized drawings that we could do any cost estimates on or anything like that. Uh, we are meeting as a planning committee, Barry, Gavin, and myself, and bringing proposals back to the board. And last week we uh, heard we got an invitation to come before council. So we've kind of um, put it all down onto paper and put it into some form of presentation so that uh, council has a good opportunity to see what we've been talking about so far. Um, the rough sketches that we have are exactly that, just rough sketches. We were talking about the project that would be really nice if everyone's in agreement and we get the endorsement for it, um, to be able to construct the building all at one time. But the board realized that that's probably not a realistic uh, expectation and um, propose something uh, like the Agriplex uh, is doing where we would do it in a phased approach where we could bring it to lock up for storage first 
then add in the other areas as fundraising uh, works out and we get the, the uh, funds to do it. Um, also leading on on the proposal, uh, we recognize that Claire's Home is very much an agricultural based uh, economy, not only the town of Claire's Home, but also the MD. Uh, we have a little bit of uh, agricultural uh, heritage represented within the museum, but not very much at all. The items that we're talking about for storage and for uh, display, a lot of them are actually agricultural related items that are in the storage units and that are over at the town yard. So it would give us an opportunity to be able to display those. Um, I had identified early on with our board the need for a workshop. And um, believe it or not, last October when we were putting together the Louise McKinney exhibit, uh, we were actually painting parts of the com components for that exhibit on our dining room table here. And um, as it says in the proposal as well, the hangar out at the airport or the flight training building out at the airport was avail available for us to use as a workshop, but that's now gone as well. And there are other other um, exhibit related, like uh, I don't know if you've seen the Facebook post where they were painting the panels outside uh, in the summertime. That would be something we'd do in the workshop as well. Lots of opportunities for uh, to do things in the workshop. Came to light that the senior center uh, was also looking at putting an addition on their building and part of that addition was for a workshop where they could teach classes and where the seniors could actually use the workshop uh, on a regular basis um, and in discussing it with um, with the senior center with uh, Lori Butler uh, Lori actually brought it to the board they had a board meeting and the response I got back was one of enthusiasm that they definitely wanted to explore it that they were uh, kind of stalled on their project right now and would be really interested in finding a way to, to get it going and seeing this as a way that we could do it. Also as an opportunity for some of their seniors to be able to get involved working on museum related projects. So that was a, that was seen as an advantage as well. Um, just quickly to go through design considerations. The building would be located on the southeast corner of the museum property and that was proposed by former boards uh, and brought to council before. The vintage barn style um, was seen as very important um, as a nod to that agricultural heritage that we have within our community. The size of the building was discussed and um, I went down to McGrath and McGrath has a slightly smaller building uh, but when we looked at it for maneuvering equipment around inside it, uh, fire trucks, combines, uh, stuff like that, it would be rather small. So uh, we were looking at uh, 40 feet wide and 80 feet long with uh, with the 20 feet added on for the workshop. Um, and then the concrete floors right through didn't all have to be heated. The area that the, art of, the agriculture related larger artifacts were going to be stored and displayed didn't necessarily need to be heated. The workshop would be and the artifact storage where the storage shelving would be um, and I had also included in a little area for non-artifact museum storage and that would be for display cases that we're currently not using. We have a chamber of commerce wagon that they used to take downtown that would be stored in there. Just items that we have no place to store them where we can actually just wheel it in on ground level. Um, the upper floor, uh, as we were talking about it at the, at the subcommittee level, uh, we were talking about putting in the floor, putting up the walls, putting on the roof. Uh, it would create an opportunity with not a lot of added expense to be able to utilize that upper floor for museum programming, for children's programming, for seniors programming, for to be able to bring traveling exhibits in. Uh, we had a large traveling exhibit on surveyors that was inside the museum. Uh, three, four years ago. That is the sort of thing that could be displayed up in that in that loft area of the barn. Also, the Friends of the Museum could utilize that space for their speaker series and for some of their other events and activities as well. <coughs> um, again, it would be nice if it could be finished right away, but we understand that that probably wouldn't be realistic. So again, fundraising could take place to finish it as time went on. Um, 
the previous board suggestion of a lean to alongside of the barn it was also seen as a possibility uh, again that can be added on later but it would give another opportunity to display more agri agricultural equipment and um, when I was down in McGrath they were actually displaying some agricultural equipment outside um, I, if it was outside, I'd prefer to see it covered in some way, but definitely agricultural equipment is not as sensitive as some of the other artifacts and can be displayed in that way. And um, depending on how the barn building is positioned on the site, uh, the addition of a deck uh, from the second floor, and that would not only be um, a deck to be used at an events or whatever, but it would also be um, like a, an emergency exit, a second exit to the building. And then just fundraising considerations, I had brought it to the board's attention, some of the fundraising activities that the McGrath Museum undertook to accomplish their project. And it was very exciting and the community got behind it and, and their, their project was most definitely focused on agriculture. That's the um, McGrath Museum and Agricultural Heritage Center. So uh, everything about the building is, is a nod to agriculture. So just, I'm not going to read them all through, but it, uh, I listed off some of the uh, fundraising activities that they undertook to do that. So um, I know talking with the board that they're very committed to uh, fundraising in part um, some of the funds to, to go towards a building like that. So having said all that, if there are any questions, I would accept questions. If not, pass it back to Barry to, to talk about the specific requests from the board. Any questions? Go ahead, Barry. Okay. Um, so, uh, what we're there were four things that we were re requesting uh, council to consider, and that is um, we'd like we'd be interested in approval in principle for the sort of concept we're going for for this uh, multi-purpose museum building on the grounds, current grounds. Um, we request to move the 200,000 that's in the capital budget um, from tw for 2025 to move it up to either 2021 or 2022 uh, so we can get started sooner and uh, request for approval um, to develop some more detailed working drawings so we can get some idea of what this building would uh, cost. We know it, it would be, at least what we're proposing here would be considerably more than 200,000. And um, request for uh, for us to develop a fundraising plan um, to support the this community, this project. So those are the things that we would ask council to consider and, and uh, um, in association with this meeting or this building. Okay, sounds good. Uh, we don't make decisions on the first uh, delegation, but yep. council will consider your options and get back to you. Okay, that's fair. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Good you job. very much. Yeah, bye now. Bye. Bye. <coughs> Just Yeah, come on. Okay. Okay. Um, the minutes didn't get approved. Okay. Previous minutes. Can we have a motion to approve the previous minutes? Councillor Cutler. All those in favor? Okay, hey, item one, news release, Government of Canada. Marion. So uh, this was a news release put out uh, on October 20th. Um, on Canada's goal is to have zero plastic waste by 2030. And so there is a comprehensive plan that they've created that um, includes the elimination of single-use plastic items such as bags and straws. So I thought that was important for Council to be aware of. Um, 
the government is also looking for input from Canadians and um, stakeholders on what how we feel about that um, project going forward and they'll accept comments until December 9th of this year um, and then they expect to have the regulations finalized by the end of 2021. So if anyone wants to comment, I can get you the link to that on their website. Thank you. I'd like maybe you could send me that link. Okay. Uh, thank you. Item two, correspondence. Honorable Tracy Allard, Minister of Municipal Affairs. Marion? Um, so we received word that our project we applied for under the Municipal Stimulus Program for the amount of $449,325 for the Second Street West Rehabilitation from 49th to 51st Avenue has been approved. So we will move forward with that project in early 2021. Perfect. Nice. Item three, correspondence. Honorable Tracy Allard, Minister of Municipal Affairs, Assessment Model Review. Marion? So we've been talking about the Assessment Model Review for quite some time and the impact that that might have on municipalities, uh, both urban and rural, but in most particular was rural Alberta uh, because of the changes they were proposing to the linear tax. The new minister has done some public consultation. Uh, I was in one meeting with her that I reported to council on a month or two ago. They have decided that they won't move forward with the proposed models at this point in time. They are going to do some economic incentive for oil and gas industry in the province um, to encourage new investments. So they are giving a three-year property tax holiday for new investment. And um, they're eliminating the well drilling equipment tax beginning in January of 2021. They've also added additional depreciation adjustments for those lower producing wells. And um, they're also looking at a shallow gas assessment reduction of 35% for a three year period. What that means for us is we anticipated there would be about a $20,000 reduction in our linear tax um, invoicing that we put out and so that will be removed and we'll be able to add that back into our budget. The other thing that it does is for the rural municipalities, it may assist us with some of our other agreements that we have in place where they contribute to us financially because I won't report on what the MD's savings will be with this new model, but it's significant. So a um, couple of good things there. Thank you. Correspondence, Roger Reed, MLA. Alberta Government Affordable Housing Review. Marion? We were given notice that the Alberta Government was looking at doing an amalgamation of housing boards in communities, especially in rural communities where they felt that there was probably a duplication in cost and expense. In our community, we have the Housing Authority as well as the Lodge that were the two that were being looked at or if so if they were hiring a new CAO for any of those positions that the government wanted to be notified ahead of time so that they could look at potential cost savings and amalgamation. So we met with Roger Reed, uh, our MLA, and the two CA, current CAOs of those two boards uh, and some council members and myself and the mayor. And um, it was determined at that time that we would try to advocate for our community to remain as is because our boards are functioning very well, the organizations are functioning very well and they're in a good financial position. And so this is just a letter that Roger sent to the minister um, cautioning the minister not to use a broad stroke when they're looking at these amalgamations because communities such as ourselves, it would actually have 
a detrimental effect on how we currently operate. So. Thank you. Number five, correspondence, Alberta Police Interim Advisory Board, first quarterly report. Marion? This is just the first report of that interim advisory board. I mean, they're looking at what are the terms of reference of that board, so there isn't much new that's coming out of this at all, as of yet. Yeah. Okay, six, correspondence, Old Man Watershed Council annual report. Marion? Uh, we much. didn't include the annual report in the agenda package, but we can provide it for you if you would like it. It's basically just what they've been doing over the last year. We have uh, supported this organization for a number of years now, and we'll be looking at that again as part of our budget process, but um, there is obviously some very good work that's going on there to ensure the, the viability and sustainability of our watershed in, in this area. So. Good. Number seven, correspondence, Rowan House, Family Violence Prevention Month. Marian? They would, Rowan House would like Council to proclaim November as Family Violence Prevention Month in the town of Clarison. Council has not in the past chosen to do proclamations, but we have done some advertising and, and trying to recognize these significant um, moments, I guess, or activities that, uh, that these organizations are trying to do throughout the province. So, we can put something in the paper if you'd like, or if you'd like, you can proclaim the month. We usually add something into our weekly. We can. Like yeah, our, our little section that we have or something, right? Yeah. We what can. we could do with that is, you know, maybe just put something in if uh, sort of more of a, a resource. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if, if you happen to be experiencing right. family violence in Family Violence Month, Here's some resources that you could access would be, I think, an appropriate I like that. thing to put in the ad. Gavin? Can we make a motion for that now? But it doesn't necessarily need a motion. Just we would just, right. we can go ahead and do that just as part of our month, the weekly reports that we do in the paper. Please do. Correspond number eight correspondence Clareson District Transportation Society operating space for the society. Marion. So Councillor Sch uh, Schultz sits on that committee, and she's not here tonight. But uh, the Transportation Society has been working over the last year to get themselves into a better financial position and so they're making the request to council for consideration of allowing them some space in the new multi-use building as well as providing some space for them to park their vehicles they're paying uh, a significant amount right now for the ability to be able to park their uh, vehicles in a private parking lot and um, so they're just asking for consideration from council for that. Perfect. Thank you. But do you want that to go to budget for discussion? Yeah. Is that where yeah. it should be? Yeah, I think that's what the discussion discussed. was before, right? So yeah. Was the uh, budget? Okay. So we should have a motion just to direct that request to the budget audit and finance committee for budget discussions. I can make that motion. Thank you, Mr. Cars. All in favor? Correspondence Clarsome and Area Palliative Care Committee Campground Light Display. Marion. 
So the main fundraiser for the Clare's Home and Area Palliative Care Committee is the Tree of Hope. And due to COVID, they have some dif difficulty with that in how they've operated that in the past with uh, location and uh, gathering of people. So what they're proposing this year is to have it a drive-through Christmas light display in the campground. They'd like to have a, a individuals or businesses or whoever that wants to sponsor decorate some sites in the campground using the electrical that is available there, have the community drive in from 4th Street through the campground and then out here um, just past the on the east end of the Centennial Campground. Um, they would like to, like I said, be able to use the electrical plugs and also just ensure that the roads are cleared for the event. They're looking at the dates. Sorry, I'm just trying to find it in here. Yeah. Evenings of December 10th, 11th, 12th, and then 17th, 18th, and 19th. So they're looking for a donation of power at the campsite stalls for the two weekends, plowing if needed, and then the authorization to be able to use the, the campground. Comments, questions? Hi. You make that. <laughs> so I was also reading that the date, the 10th, 11th, 12th, 17th, 18th, 19th, we, we didn't close the campground this year, right? It still remains open, right? Some sites with electric kids. Yes. Right. But they want it the whole time, right? Because they're going to want it beforehand to decorate during the week and, and just leave everything up, right? Like it's, it's more of the two week period than just the weekends, right? They're not going to take down and set up new ones. Right. Okay. That's um, my understanding. That's why that's why I kind of read it too, but I just wanted to make sure. Mm -hmm. But And we don't use that campground that often in the winter. It's just more for the snowbirds, right? Well, there might be some Couple. crews or whatever in there, so we would just have to arrange to make sure that we have the sites available. Okay. I like it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's a COVID-friendly way of yes. doing a drive to Reminds me of Lion, Lions Park on 14th in Calgary when you're driving down. Mm -hmm. Well, I know Innisfil does this at their campground too. Every year they get this site to make you up a business competition. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. And it's good. It's mm -hmm. easy. And it's a good way for them to raise money for their tree of hope that they're not able to. Mm -hmm. Do we need a motion to approve that? Right? Yes, we do. Councillor Cutler. Question? Great. by Councillor Cutler to allow the Clarestone Area Palliative Care Committee to use Centennial Park uh, Campground for a Christmas light display as a fundraiser, allow them to use the town's power supply for, for their display, and to ensure that the roads are clear of snow for their event. All in favor? Passed. Number 10, Correspondence, Claire's Home and District Museum, Request for Change of Use. Marion? The museum didn't use up all of their uh, wage budget this year, uh, just because of COVID and some of the changes there. So they are in need of getting some of their artifacts um, cataloged and some of that backlog done there. And so they had made the request to move funds between accounts of where they had unused wages account, wage uh, budget and move it to uh, a different position, which would be the visitor information, uh, or sorry, a collections technician, they call it. Uh, the request was made to me, which I have authorization under the policy to do but I felt that with all the other unknown expenses and loss in revenue that we had in 2020 due to COVID, I was unsure what that final budget impact would be, whether we'll have a surplus or a deficit or what position we'll be in. And so at that time, I denied the request. The museum board has made a motion on October 20th 
request that the request come to council for the change in use of those funds from the wages to uh, go to the collections technician. So that's why it's before council for decision. Hmm. Questions? Mary? The request could just be simply directed to budget discussions. If there happens to be, as we get closer to the end of the year, if there happens to be some surplus that we can maybe allocate money from this year to go into 2021, what we would do is reserve unexpended amounts this year and, res and then transfer that into the operations in 2021 if there is money left over. Um, That's what I was thinking. So it, it could, you know, there could be potential, but I, I don't know where our <coughs> bottom line is going to be at this point. But that comes to the budget discussions when we're doing the audit. Yeah. Yeah. And one of, one of the things that might help us out is that we did get the operating the most money right. in the province, which is to help with those costs that we incurred and loss of revenue. So we may be able to find some funding to support this in 2021, but I think it's important to look at it from the overall budget perspective and not just individual departments. Okay. A motion to send to audit and finance. Councillor Cutler. Kareem. By Councillor Cutler should direct the request from the Clarence District Museum to hire a temporary part-time collections technician to the Audit and Finance Committee for budget discussions. All in favor? Passed. Request for decision. Policy update. Marion. Both of these policy updates were presented to the Audit and Finance Committee. The first is an update, an amendment to the investment policy. We're, we've traditionally just invested money in the financial institution that is where we have our accounts at. But with the low investment return that we're getting right now, we wanted to look at other options and, and see if there's other opportunities there to uh, provide us a little more rate of return. And also one thing that's important is as we build up reserves through our, for our water wastewater projects, we want to make sure that we're getting a good rate of return on that so that the money is built up over time to be able to do those replacements. So the main change to this policy is just allowing the CAO to select other investment dealers or institutions rather than just strictly our regular bank. And then also that we can look at specific investments within the funds um, for that. The second policy change is the miscellaneous fees policy. And this is talking about um, when there's an assessment appeal and the fees that are there. In 2018, we adjusted the multi-residential and non-residential from $50 up to $150 per parcel and that's for assessments with a value less than $300,000 and then a $300 fee for an assessment value equal or greater than $300,000. The Municipal Government Act allows for $650 per parcel regardless of the assessment value so we're still substantially lower than that. We, would, uh, we did recommend though to the Audit and Finance Committee that we increase those fees further because there's a cost to us to uh, process those fees or those appeals administratively. And so it was recommended that we keep the graduated rates but to double them to $300 and $600 respectively. 
that still doesn't cover our costs, but it at least assists in a small way. Both of those policies were recommended by the audit and finance to be approved by council. Could I have a motion on the investment policy? Or both? I think we can do it as one motion, yeah. Okay. Investment and fee changes? I'll make a motion. Gavin Moore. Green. By Councillor Moore to adopt the following updated policies effective October 26, 2020. Policy 3.2.05, the investment policy, and policy 5.9.05, miscellaneous fees policy, version 1.2, effective October 13, 2020. All in favor? Okay, financial report, statement of operations. Questions, concerns? Oh, Brownlee Emerging Trends we Municipal. Need a resolution for both of those to approve those financial reports. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to approve the financial statement of operations. August 31st and then a the second motion for the September 30th. Mr. Cutler for August 31st. Question? Moved by Councillor Cutler to accept the consolidated statement of operations for the month ended August 31st, 2020 as presented. All in favor? Motion for our statement of operations September 30th, 2020. Councillor Moore. Question, Crean. Moved by Councillor Moore to accept the consolidated statement of operations for the month ended September 30th, 2020, as presented. All in favor. Information brief, Brownlee LLP, Emerging Trends. Marion? This is an annual event that Brownlee LLP, which is a lawyer's office that specializes in municipal law, puts on and they just look at what are some of the trends in municipal law and what councils need to be aware of and administration needs to be aware of. This year they're holding the conference via Zoom uh, for February 11th, 2021. And so anyone who is interested can either register online through that or let us know and we can get you registered. It's always a very informative session. I really like it. All right, information brief, airport land purchase update. Marion? At the August 17th meeting, council approved a motion to accept the offer to purchase lot 8 block 1 plan 7910032 from Keith Armstrong uh, with the stipulation that the sale be as is where is and on the condition that a development permit be in place within one year. After reviewing this, uh, Mr. Armstrong has determined that he will not be moving forward with the purchase of the lot as the servicing costs and development costs are exceeding his expectations. Information brief, CAO report. Any questions, comments? Wonderfully done again. Can I have a motion to adopt the information items? I'll make a motion. Councillor Moore. Motion to go in camera. I'll make a motion to go in camera. Okay. All in favor? Camera.
Can I have a motion to come out of camera? Gavin? All in favor? Motion to adjourn. Wow. Thanks, Gavin. Camera.